They're not afraid to kind of touch you. They use that closeness to get too close. Like it gets very, very uncomfortable. All around you, you're thinking this is a holy city. This surely should be one of the safest spaces in the world. There's, there's much, much darker stories. My parents went to the Hajj. They went to the pilgrimage. Before they went, they were given so many warnings about what they should do during the Hajj. And I witnessed the same thing when other people went to the Hajj. And there was one warning that stuck out so much that uh, women should be especially careful during the Hajj, and that my father should always stay very close to my mother and never let go of her hand. I remember this one conversation about, about, about cabs, about taxis. They were saying that my father should go in first and uh, let her let my mother out first because many things happen like women being sexually harassed, having their belongings stolen more often, or even being abducted or something. Is that something that you uh, know of? Yeah, to be honest, it's something I know a bit too uh, too much of, which makes you really question like a lot of things. Because I've said this so many times, um, this amount of stories of women, even if like my dad had the same fears when when we would go as a family, you know. So um, it becomes it becomes really kind of intense and awkward and dangerous, even when you're doing tawaf, like when you're circumambulating the Kaaba especially like I said in Ramadan times well it's it's like a mini hajj at that point so it's like the same amount of rush but honestly they're not afraid to pinch your bum they're not afraid to kind of touch you or you're in an abaya but they use that closeness to get too close like it gets very very uncomfortable um and you're kind of in in shock at that moment because the garba's here and you're here getting touched up by some man who's in a haram and supposed to be here cleansing his soul and heart and purifying himself and you also don't feel like it's the right time to even tell the man or the person you're with your mehram because it, it, it's just it, it's such a horrible thing to experience but it happens all the time um sexual harassment like that. Also theft, you know, people who leave their shoes outside the mosque, they go missing. And again, all around you, you're thinking this is a holy city. This surely should be one of the safest spaces in the world. But no, it, it's it's got all of the same little ugly things happening that, that happen out, out in the rest of Saudi Arabia as well. I know so many stories where women have come back from Umrah and Hajj and just had these horrible stories and they haven't even told their husbands or whoever they were with. Um, and then obviously, like, I, there's there's much, much darker stories, which probably will very much kill the mood of this conversation. But even one of my own teachers from high school had, like, the most horrific experience happen to her where she was in a taxi. And uh, the guy just took a detour and drove her into the middle of the desert and raped her and just left her there. Um, and she somehow, somehow, somehow made it back. But all I saw of her was she came to school to collect her belongings and she just left the country. And you can't even imagine like what would have happened. And the fact that she just silently left the country knowing there's no justice that she would ever get in Saudi Arabia.